it's such a privilege for us to be in the ministry and to, to share and to listen from the Holy Spirit and then share with God's people what is on the heart of our Father. And, you know, there are so many people that they, they abuse the position of a pulpit to gain a kingdom for themselves and to get a future for themselves and a safety zone and a comfort zone for themselves and to get, get a name for themselves and, and try to please people through systems. But then there are those, and, and I always say, those are the true sons. The true sons are those that knows the Father and they specifically share the heart of the Father in the midst of storms, in the midst of opposition, in the midst of whatever. They've got one goal, they've got one focus, and that is, Father, what do you want to say to the people? And you know, the secret, there's a massive secret in that, because when you are connected to the Father, life flows. Everything that pertains to life, everything that pertains to who God is, it just flows. We all know uh, John chapter 15, we must abide in the vine. And that is the principle how God operates. God, uh, in Pro- uh, Proverbs it says this, it is the fruit, the root that yields the fruit. I'm going to repeat that. It is the root that yields the fruit. You see, we come to church and we try to bear fruit. And yes, this week I'm going to bear fruit. I'm going to be an awesome Christian. And I'm going to try and live a holy life. And instantly the Griquas loses their rugby match. And you lose your temper. And it's suddenly, oh Lord, forgive me. I've just lost my fruit. And, and no, 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 no. Be rooted yeah. in Him. Be rooted. This is music Griquas, what is it? No. Oh, hallelujah, say it right. All right. So, <laughs> imagine I can never forget as one you can remember. Be specific. Be specific. Oh, hallelujah. No, the Galatians. All right. I get my mic in the hand. All right. So, it is very important for us to to know the principle that we must be in the Father. I told Bruce. Uh, last night, you know, we, we grew up in a house where we were taught sonship, sonship, sonship. This is who the sons of God is. The, this is who they are. And, and all the things that pertains to sh- sonship. But you know, they can't be sons without a father. There's first a father and then there's sons. And Jesus uh, taught us this principle. He said, uh, I do only what I see my father do. So it is vitally, it's important for us, and this might sound stupid, but it is it is the most precious key is relationship with the father. We can stand here in the front and we can bring all the revelation. We can manifest a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. We can do it. We can do the ten plagues like with Moses. We can feed manna daily. We can pour water out of the rock. But if you don't have a relationship with the Father, you are just like all those millions of people that walked around the mountain for 40 years. Although there's leaders in front of us. So there's, I don't want to say responsibility because instantly you, you are trying to bear fruit. No, no, no. The only responsibility you have is just go and relax in front of your father's feet. Just go and sit, spend time, you with your father, and hear his heartbeat. The issue is, we, found, we, we look for every possible excuse why we are not qualified to sit there. We always try and look at our sins and we lift up our sins and we stay with sins and teaching about, oh, come on, get free from your condemnation and all these things. Why can't we move on? Yes, sir. Yeah. All right? You see, the moment, 
God took the, the, the Israelites out of Egypt. So the Israelites, God set them free. But you know what God said? He, he told Moses, go back to Egypt and go and tell Pharaoh this. Now, please, just see the state that the Israelites were in. They were brick makers in those years. And they had to make bricks for Pharaoh. And they had to do a specific requirement in order for Pharaoh to be pleased with them. And if they did not fulfill the requirement, 50 bricks a day, for instance, they were beaten up and privileges were taken away. So they were slaves. And if they fulfilled the requirement for that day, they were safe. But they would only do what was required of them. That's the law system. All right, that's the law. The law says it requires of you to, if you see your brother without a garment, give him your uppercut. Jesus comes and he says, no, 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 no. Let me go further than the uppercut. Give him everything. All right, so there's, there's a requirement and a lot of people are still stuck there where we just do what is required of us. If I go to church, if I read five scriptures a day, if I do this, I'm safe. Now, please don't hear what I'm not saying. So I'm not trying to, to put a law on you again, all right? I'm trying to tell you how God sees you. And this is what God says. God said to Moses, he said, Moses, go and tell Pharaoh, let my son go. Let my son go. I see the potential where I'm taking him. And the way that I speak is where I see him. God never said, my poor slaves that's in Egypt, Go and set all those slaves, go and set them free. He never said that. He said, that's my son. That's the apple of my eye. I want to take him to a land. I want to take him to a land, an inheritance, a land flowing with milk and honey. That's where I want to take my son. So God spoke the potential. And then... We all know the, the, the whole uh, uh, thing that happened in Egypt, how they partook of the Passover, and it's interesting how God told them how to eat it. I don't know if you've ever read it. He said this, When you eat this lamb, every house a lamb for himself, eat it with your backpack, your Kway backpack on your back, ready. Your Solomon's on your feet, ready for the journey. All right? He said, be ready, because you're going to eat this hastily, the lamb, so that you can, because they're going to remove you very quickly out of this slavery. Wow. When? When you partake of the lamb, wow. the cross. Wow. And that lamb, it doesn't say it in the Bible, but I believe it was enough to sustain them for the journey. Because they could have gone to the promised land within a few days. All right? So, yeah, they say something like 11 days. If they really walked and didn't murmur and didn't whatever, 10 days and they, they, they were there. Or 11 days, they were there. So, here these guys, they go out. God does all these awesome wonders, signs and miracles. Split the Red Sea type of baptism, leaving slavery behind. Uh, go in and, and 50 days later, they stop at a place called Ma Mount Sinai. 50 is the day of Pentecost, you know that. 50 means Pentecost. So they come to Sinai and here is a, a voice that speaks from the mountain. But you know how the people responded? Please, we don't want to hear that voice. We don't want to hear that voice. It creates fear in us. All right? Moses went up the mountain. Joshua went up the mountain. It was open for everybody to go there. Anybody could go there. 
Actually, before that, it's in, in Exodus, it says, and God appeared to the 70 elders yeah. and to Israel. God appeared to them all. Wow. Yeah, right. All right? But they said, no, 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 we fear. Why do people fear God? Because they are aware of their fallen state. Yeah. Ask Adam and Eve. We hid ourselves from your presence because we were afraid, yeah. because we were naked. All right, so condemnation, awareness of your own personality, awareness of your weaknesses, it makes you fear and it shuts you out from having a free relationship with your father. Yeah. The truth is, your father did everything to reconcile you back to himself. The truth, the fact is that God did everything to prove to you that while you were a sinner, He demonstrated and proved His love towards you. That's beautiful. All right. It says, while you did not choose me, I chose you. While you were my enemy, I reconciled you back to myself. Romans 4, Romans 5. Yeah. While we were enemies to God, He proved His love. By killing his son, the Passover lamb. All right. So in the book of Hebrews, it says this. Let us not again lay all these foundation, foundations of repentance of sins and all these things. But let's go on to perfection now. All right. So he... he you know that all those things that he mentions there, the raising of the dead, the repent that, that's a Pentecostal manual. <laughs> And that's exactly where the church still camps today. Yeah. We think Pentecost was it. It wasn't. Yeah. That was Mount Sinai. God wanted to take them to Mount Zion. Wow. All right? Which was what? It was the promised land. Yeah. So, a lot of people, a lot of Christians has got this mentality, not to be ugly or whatever, but to just set people free. We have a mentality of, I was born on this earth to try and find God, to try and get forgiveness for my badness, and then just to live right so that I can get a ticket to get to heaven. That I can just be safe and, whoa, don't worry, I'm going to heaven one day. That's not why you were born. That's not why you were born. Uh, can I shock you? Heaven is not the ultimate place. Can I shock you? Heaven is not the ultimate place. It is the best place. Please hear me right. But to know Him, that's the ultimate place. Why does it help you stay in heaven and you've got your beautiful mansion and whatever, but God is still there? It means you've got a fleshly mentality about heaven. It still is something that benefits me and to feed my flesh and I'm going to ride my Ducati on these golden streets in heaven one day. Flesh, stimulating self. It means you're still aware of self and you're not Christ-centered. Yes. There's no love in it. There's no love in it. All right. So we are still, we, we are Christians, but we are born not from above. We are born from the earth with still a fleshly mindset of a born-again experience. Do you know what is supposed to happen when you got born again? When you were born again, the spiritual realm opened to you. And the issue is today we sit with, and please, I'm not bashing. Ugh, it sounds horrible how I'm preaching at the moment. I'm not bash, bashing people, but I'm trying to draw you up and tell you what really belongs to you. Yeah. All right? Yeah. So you actually are supposed to realize that around us today, there are angels. Have you experienced it today? Or have we become so carnally, fleshly 
minded or programmed that we don't understand the spiritual realm that is around us all the godly beings that we don't worship them but it is awesome to be aware of it do you know that we are surrounded by the cloud of witnesses we are uh, Christ is in this place today Everything that you need in your situation, the answer is right here. It's right here. But we try and, 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 and grab it, but we try it the wrong way. You know, we, uh, we all know cell phones and smartphones and all these things. And uh, uh, you have uh, what we call an operating system. You know what that is? Like iPhones have got an Apple, the Mac yeah. system on it, and you've got the Android system that's on the Samsung phones. And so there's a platform or an operating system. You've got the operating system of heaven, yes. not earth. Yeah. Wow. That's good. Heavenly gifts are not compatible with earthly tryings and how to try and make them work. God is spirit, and those that worship Him must worship Him in flesh. In spirit, the right operating system. All right? So it, it sounds difficult, but it is so easy. It is so easy. We always try to, to understand where God says, relax, it's from my side that I did it. You can just say, thank you, I receive it. Because the blood, the Christ, did everything that I needed. He became the door. I'm not a door basher. I'm not trying to bash heaven open to get in it. The door is open. How do I get there? Through what the blood paid for me. The way we enter is very easy. <laughs> All right. It, Colossians chapter 3. Set your mind. On the things above yeah. keep it set all right it says Christ who is our life shall appear do you want him to appear in your situations in your house in your car in your marriage he's there you know my, my father-in-law as we drove here he, he just spoke to me and he said this one thing I think it's Hudson Taylor, one of those guys, said this. In the di there's a direct equation or a proportion, I don't know if I'm saying this right, but in the proportion that you understand that Christ actually is in you with His fullness, the measure you believe that is the measure that it manifests. Yeah. So it entirely just relies or, or it depends on do you believe me that I've done it yes do you believe that my fullness is in you yes Lord and as you start growing in that fullness that fullness starts to manifest it's got nothing to do with your works with your brick making it's got nothing to do with it. It's got everything to do with His promise to you. I promised I give you an inheritance. I promise that I will take you by the hand and lead you through the wilderness to the land that belongs to you. To you. What do we do? Did God really take us all the way to Kimberley to let us die here in the wilderness. Can God really prepare a table in this place? He says, don't, they provoked Him, they tempted God. It wasn't God. They did it. They brought it over themselves. He says, you will walk for 40 years, you will die in your own mindset in the wilderness. You shut yourself out of the promised land. Hebrews 3 and 4. Because of unbelief, they could not enter. Because of God? No. Because of unbelief. <laughs> yeah. 
Actually, he says this. He says, it's, they could not enter the rest. You know, how many of you, it's going to be everybody, wants to operate through rest, peace, knowing what belongs to you? I want to operate knowing what belongs to me. I mean, uh, uh, Philippians chapter 3, Paul says this. He says, I uh, want to know uh, I count everything as lost to know what Christ paid, you know, that, that scriptures. But then he says this. He says, I want to lay hold of that which Christ laid hold of me, for me. Something like that. Just picture this. When Jesus went to that cross, there was something that he knew, I'm going to achieve this. It was called the price. That was set before him are you with me yeah. so for the price that was set before him he endured the cross yeah. what was that price it definitely was it, it's us but it's more than you it's you in his image and in his likeness that's, that's why you were born yeah, so you were born Paul says, for this reason I was born. That God can reveal His Son to me, yeah. in me, and through me. So that heaven can come to earth. Yeah. Alright? So yes, I'm not taking away your heaven. We are going there. Alright? Whatever it might be, we don't know what it's going to be like. It's just going to be awesome. But I want that here. Yeah as well as it is in heaven here all right i want it to manifest in my daily walk because i don't want to walk in the wilderness and even if i am in the wilderness i will not murmur about the things that's around me why because i've got a price that is set before me and it's him all right so Let's, we probably need to read something. So let's go to the book of Joshua. I wanted to use the board, but we, we'll skip it for today. The book of Joshua. So please, when, when we preach, and I believe Bruce is like this as well, it's actually prophetic word. People say, why don't you prophesy? Didn't you listen? I prophesied the whole time. <laughs> the book of Joshua. And chapter 3. This is prophetic. Chapter 3 and verse 4 say, says, Yet there shall be a space between you and it about 2,000 cubits by measure, come not near unto it, that you may know the way by which you must go. All right, that was the ark, that they had to have 2,000 cubits, however long that was, 2,000 cubits between them and the ark, so that they could see if he turned to the right there to follow it, that way and this way, all right? So the ark today is internal, it's Christ. Now listen to this that you may know the way by which you must go, for you have not passed this way before, or here to fall. Alright? I believe the church is in a time where we are stepping into uncharted territory. I don't know about you. Yeah. Alright? So, please, must I first quickly break down a few uh, mindsets? All right? Please don't have a mindset of destruction because it will hinder you from seeing where God is taking us. God's not about to destroy the earth. Yeah. All right? As surely as I live, my glory will fill the earth. Amen. I will manifest my glory through the vessels of mercy. Yes. Yes. All right? So please don't have a mentality of uh, destruction or a mindset of, oh, brother. Did you read the news again? No, no, no. Set your mind on the things above. Amen. Whatsoever is true, lovely, pure, set your mind on those things yes. of good report. Yes. 
Why? God created you that way. He created you that if you set your mind on bad things, it poisons you. All right? So a lot of people sit in church, but they were washed this whole week through the newspaper. And now we first need to break down the newspaper before we can teach you of the above life. So Moses constantly had to get back to the people. Oh, I see you've built a golden uh, calf again with all your fleshly earrings and gold and nonsense that you gathered. All right, let me just quickly tell you again what God wants to do. And in order to shake you a little bit, God had to do a few things, radical things to shake their minds. And then let's go again, boys. All right. So let's not be like those people. And I thank God because I believe we are in a generation where we, where we will not be like them. We are like the generation that entered the promised land. Joshua and Caleb that said, in the midst of giants, in the midst of what we see, it doesn't look like it's possible. God said we can, therefore we are going to. All right. So that is the, the attitude that we need to have. And you must have that attitude, otherwise you're not going to make it. Sorry. You're not going to make it. No, not negatively, but you... It, it sounds tough, but it's not tough at all. Because you're not going to fight the battles. The Lord's going to fight for you. The only battle we are going to fight is, do you trust me, my son? Dad, you're awesome. But you won. You've just won. That's our battle. Our battle is, do you believe and trust my ability? Am I able to do it for you. You are able. You got it. That's all God wants from us. That's all He wants from us. And then you stay there. Because the flesh will do everything possible to try and distract you from that experience that you had between you and your father. How many of you have come to church and say, for instance, you had a pain in your body and you ask Bruce, please come and pray for me. And you stand here and hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. And your faith is high because he just taught on healings and miracles. And yes, I believe this sickness is over. Monday morning. Oh my word, it's worse. Oh my, oh my goodness. And then you start question and you, and you, well, what have I done wrong now? Lord, are you punishing me? Why is it worse now? Didn't I believe yesterday? You should have just relaxed. You know when Daniel's friends were thrown in the fire? It was heated seven times worse. <laughs> were they concerned about the fire? No, they were focused on the fourth man in the fire. Because his Lord over the fire. They didn't even smell like fire. All right. So you have not gone this way before. Joshua said to the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders amongst you. This is so prophetic. This is so prophetic for the church. Verse 7. This day will I begin to magnify you in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with, with Moses, so shall I be with you. So chapter 5, you can turn there, or if they put it on the board. Chapter 5, and this is after 40 years, after wandering around, after walking around the mountain, all these things that these guys did, the whole nation is purged of all those old mindsets. All the people with the Egypt mindset died in the wilderness. Joshua, Caleb, the new generation is standing there in front. They cross the Jordan and listen to this. Actually, they circumcised the children that morning, verse 8. And it came to pass when they had done circumcising all the people that they abode in their places in the camp till they were whole. 
And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt. This is 40 years after Egypt. Wow. This day I've rolled away the, the reproach of Egypt from off you. Wherefore the name of that place is called Gilgal to this day. And the children of Israel encamped in Gilgal, and they kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month at evening in the plains of Jericho. Listen. And they did eat of the old corn of the land on the morrow after the Passover. Unleavened cakes, parched corn the self same day, and the manna ceased on the morrow after they had eaten of the old corn of the land the land all right what took place so how does it apply to us today the bible says we on the, the true jews are not those that circumcised in flesh we're not born after the flesh anymore we're not born after the if i do the fleshly ritual then i'm safe that's not how you get saved the true jew my sons, are those that circumcised in their hearts by Christ. Okay. What is your heart? It is the place where you believe and where you think. All right? So you are circumcised. It means it cuts away the fleshly mindsets and it gives you the mindset, the way that Christ sees things. So the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. It divides between flesh. What does it say? Bone and marrow and all these things. It divides what? The thoughts and the intents of the heart. It shows you what are you thinking. Are you, and, and this is not condemning, but it, today I just want to cut. <laughs> All right, I just want to cut. Are we sitting here and we're trying to understand God, who is spirit, through a carnal mind? How can flesh understand spirit? It cannot. In fact, Romans 8 says it's enmity against God. To be carnally minded is death. What is a carnal mind? In short, it's an unbelieving mind. There's many manifestations how it operates, but it's, can God really? That is a carnal mind. It's trying to, to do things through self, through self-efforts and sweat, in, instead of just entering into the seventh day, the rest, where we say, it's all about you. You get the glory. You are the builder of the house. I'm the house. The builder gets the glory, not the house. The house gets the privilege. <laughs> the house is the vessel. The house is the dwelling place. But the house doesn't get the glory. The architect and the builder gets it. That's why I can't boast. Because he builded me. I never build it myself. Yeah. It's the root that yields the fruit. You get it. All right. So it's, it's actually such an easy place to be at. Just surrender. Just say, Lord, I believe you're strong enough. Lord, if you could take them through the wilderness, split the Red Sea open for them, you can do it again today. Lord, if you can by one angel slay 185,000 people without your people lifting one sword, if you can do it, imagine what he can do for us today. Yes. But you see, there's, there's lots of voices. There's lots of voices. The Lord gave me a dream about four years ago, and, and in this dream, I knew he was right in front of me, and, but I heard voices next to me saying specific things and the lord just told me said you look straight towards me 
if you look to the left or to the right, you're going to fall. Don't listen to their voices. And, and that is also very significant. It is beautiful. I'm not, I'm not going to go into that. But if you go and read in, in Genesis, I think chapter 3, it says this. And Adam and Eve heard the voice walking in the garden. How can you hear a voice walk? They heard. Who's the voice? And the word of God became flesh and walked amongst us. It was Jesus. Jesus is the voice of God. They heard Jesus walking in the garden. Why? Jesus is the mediator between man and God. He's the manifestation of the Father. Forever He was the manifestation of the Father. So they heard Jesus walking in the garden. We heard the voice. And we were afraid. So they hid themselves from the voice. <laughs> so here the voice gets born in Mary. And the voice grows up, Jesus. And you hear what I'm trying to say. So here comes Jesus, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You must listen to the words that I speak. The words that I speak are spirit and life. Same as the tree in the beginning and it is so awesome because we've got access to that tree because we know in, in those days there was an angel that was placed before before those that tree with this flaming sword said you don't have access to this tree anymore Adam and Eve you don't have access to the real voice I will take you now by another way but I'm gonna prove through this way that there's only one way and it's when that voice himself comes and redeems you wow. yeah. <laughs> so i'm going to give you a law and you're going to try and that law is going to point to the tree of life to jesus that law is going to point to christ it's going to show you your weakness and your inability to get to the promised land but the sooner you get to that place you leave your pride you jump off your own horse and and you say Lord, I surrender. You build me. He says, man, now it can happen like this. I think it was, yeah, it was Heidi Baker that, says that said this. She said, before she had really had a godly experience with the Holy Spirit, for years she prayed for sick people. She ministered to the orphans. She worked herself literally sick. She was burned out. Everything, just working in the ministry, working in the ministry. She said, after one genuine touch of the Holy Spirit, she achieved in the next three months more than what she achieved in the previous five or six years. <laughs> Why? Because if something is born out of the Spirit, it's God that breathes, breathes it, it is from him, and if he looks after the job assignment, things happen. It doesn't make sense. But as long as we try and have control of our lives, it's comfortable for me to just sit in a chair and receive word. Why don't you just, once, if you see somebody in the street and you see that guy is in need, leave your pride Leave your what if nothing's going to happen. Don't, don't go there. That's wilderness mindset. It kills you. You can't afford it. All right? Just go and say, sir, are you okay? No, no, no. Can I pray for you? Sometimes you don't even have to pray for him. Man, just put your hands on him. Sir, man, just wish it goes better. How do you feel now? Bah. All right, God is just looking for sons that will just manifest Him. Yeah. That will just be vessels. Yeah. All right. I mean, God went, He went so far 
that in Hebrews chapter 2, he says this of, of you. He says, for the price that was set before him, he endured the sufferings, the shame of the cross. Why? So that he could bring many sons to glory. Therefore, he is not ashamed. He, the voice that walked in the garden, the Lord that walked on the sea, the pillar that went before the, the Israelites, the rock that followed them, that very same guy says, I'm not ashamed to call you my brother. Why? I understand the principle of we've got the same father. That is big. That is, that is way... Uh, I pray that it will not be above our heads. In the measure that you believe Christ is the measure that He shows up. I'm repeating myself. All right. So, do you believe that you are a son? Do you believe that Jesus is your older brother? You can't say that. That's blasphemy. He said it. After he got resurrected, he told Mary or one of those, go to my brethren and tell them I must first go to my father, uh, our father. <laughs> that is beautiful. I think that is probably the most beautiful scripture in the Bible. Man reconciled back to the original state. Reconciled back to our father. But what do we do? Our carnal mindset says, that cannot be true. It's too much. God says, come on. Higher thoughts. Bigger thoughts. It's time to go into those things where I say, come on guys. I want to show you what's here because that is where you are born from. You're not born from below. You are born from above. So it's time to spend time there. How can you preach about things that you've never seen? It will just be words. Of course we preach because we believe. And blessed are we because we do it. Alright. But I want to experience it. Yeah. Actually, the truth is, it's available. It's open. It's there for us to step, just step into it. That's the facts. The issue with us as people is we disqualify ourselves. Do you know what I did this week? Did I mention that? Did I mention the devil? He's not in the picture even. Yeah. <laughs> so we get occupied with things that does not matter most. We get occupied by things that it's wasting our time. We, do you know what you can achieve if you just connect to God, really connect to Him for five seconds? You know what He will show you? Um, that serpent is under your feet. The one that you tried to slay with your sword in the air. Oh, I'm fighting you, devil. You're fighting nothing. You're operating in the flesh. You are sweating. You are in Adam. You're not in Christ. So get in Christ. It's easy. My yoke is easy. It's light. I've done it for you. Do you believe me? Do you believe me? They, they, I think it was in the 46 Healing Revival, they had this song, and it was one of their slogans, Only Believe. It's, it's written here on the, on the inside of my ring. My wife gave it to me on our 10th anniversary. Only believe. Only believe. It's so easy children can enter there. Yeah. Thereby, Heidi Baker, five, six-year-old uh, children, prays for dead people and they r uh, raise up. Why? They believe. Did they go through a school of evangelism and 17 courses on how to do successful whatevers? Did they do that? No. Do they believe in the ability of God? That's all that they do. Do you believe God is strong enough? Yes. Okay, pray for this guy. Boom. Miracle happens. 
What do we do? Do you believe God is strong enough? Wait, 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 just let me just build up my faith quickly. Oh Lord, you split the Red Sea. Oh Lord, you did all these things. And you psych yourself up. Right, I'm ready. I'm ready. Bring the first sick and you pray for him and maybe something happens. But the day you're not on cloud number nine, nothing happens. Why? It's dependent upon yourself. You're dependent upon yourself. God wants to set you free from yourself. <laughs> All right, so, <coughs> excuse me. So let's go to Genesis. Genesis. Man, all I'm trying to tell you is, do you really know how godly you are? Genesis chapter 2, again. Genesis 1, sorry. Are you there? Genesis chapter 1 and verse 11. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, the herbs yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. All right. That sounds stupid. And what on earth am I trying to tell you guys? <clears throat> There's a principle of a fruit that God gave us as humans to look at. He gives us an orange that we can see there's a seed on the inside of that fruit that you eat. And that seed falls in the ground and it produces an orange tree after his own kind. An orange seed cannot produce a banana tree. I hope you had biology in school. All right. So, and then he said, and he created the animals. And a buffalo has a specific seed that produces a buffalo after his own kind. And then there's a lion that has a seed in himself and he produces after his own kind. And then there was God which had a seed that produced after his own kind. Let's make man after our image, not the lion image, not the fruit image, not the tree image, our image. It's so stupid, but it's massive. So here comes the seed of the Holy Spirit in a womb, Mary. And produces the God kind. Jesus. <laughs> and he walks on earth. And, and the people say, what kind of man is this? <laughs> He's not like us, the fallen mankind. He's of a different kind. He's the God kind. He speaks to storms and it listens to him. He takes bread... And that kind multiplies bread. Who is this guy? Yes. What kind is he of? <laughs> so first Peter says, we are born again of incorruptible seed by the word of God. By the word. Who is the word? It's the voice that walked in the garden from the beginning. Do you believe me? Yeah. Isaiah 53. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, yeah. chastisement of our peace was. It says, He shall see the travail of his soul. He shall see his seed. Yeah. He will see his offspring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Of what kind are you? Are you Adam kind? Or are you God kind? Now please, this is not new age. This is not where people say, oh, you are blaspheming. Or you're... I'm not Jesus. I'm not the Prince of Peace. I'm not the firstborn. But I'm one of the many brethren. The first one gets all the glory because he left an inheritance for his brothers. So he will forever be the door. He will forever be the street of gold, the way, the truth, and the life. He will forever be the way to our father. Our oldest brother reconciled me, one of the youngest ones reconciled back to the same father. We're sitting around the same table in the presence of our enemies. God prepared a table with all my brothers. Those that has gone before and those that surround me. We are now fellow citizens in heaven. That's what it says. We are joint heirs with Christ. We are now no more strangers and pilgrims, but we are, then it says, the, the fellow citizens. That, that, that is actually so deep, we, we, we're not going to go into that, but it is so powerful. All right, so if our eyes can just open and we can see what is going on around us, do you know what and who is cheering you on? Yeah. Come on, let it motivate you. Um, we spoke about it, and, and in the flesh, sometimes we feel alone. We feel, man, we're running alone. We, but if we can just see in the spirit, we are not alone at all. <laughs> I, I think if we can, if God can just open, really open our, our physical eyes, that we can really see what's going on around, we will freak out. All right, if, uh, uh, let me freak you out a little bit more. John, the Apostle John, the beloved one, the one that walked with Jesus for three and a half years, the one that lied on Jesus' chest, the one that looked into his eyes, that was so in love with him, the one that went with him up the mountain where Jesus revealed his glory one of those three privileged guys, John. I mean, you, he saw Jesus. He knew his face. He knew how he looked in a glorified state. That John. An angel appears to him when he writes the book of Revelation. And that angel shows him a lot of things. And th in a lot of chapters, it was actually one of the six angels that poured out one of the vials, all right? One of those angels, one of the seven angels, whatever. So that angel takes John. Come, John, let me show you this. And he showed him the bride, the lamb's wife. And he showed John the river. And he showed him the city. And he showed him all these wonderful things in heaven up to a point. Where that John, that knows how Jesus looks, fall on his face in front of the angel and wanted to worship him. Yeah. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? He didn't do it. The angel said, listen to what the angel said. Don't worship me. I am one of your brethren, the prophets. Oh no, you didn't get that. It might have been Daniel, it might have been David, it might have been Abraham. It was a prophet. He says, I too obey the word of God. The point I'm trying to make is, that guy looked so much like Jesus that it almost deceived John that lied against Jesus' chest. <laughs> Alright, so, so it shows me where God is taking us. Many sons in my image and likeness. So much in my image and likeness that you will not, it will be difficult to differentiate 
Jesus? It looks like you. No, no I'm one of your brothers. I'm one of your brothers. Okay, thank you. Yo, you look like him. I'm just trying to tell you how far God wants to take you. Because we've got a fallen mentality. We've got a fallen mindset. I can never get there. Maybe one day it's going to take 40 years and you're still going to die in without receiving the promise. What about do you believe? Do you believe now? Now faith is. Not one day. Come on, let's be honest. There's a dying world out there. There's a world that needs a true reflection of Christ. Yeah. Fakeness is not working anymore. No. Let's be honest. Christianese is not working anymore. Especially with the young people. Yeah. It doesn't help you talk the Christianese language. It's about manifesting it now. Yeah. It's about manifesting. And please, I know in the same building there's there's people that uh, uh, hears what you preach and there's others that says, well, I've never heard this. This is way too high. I'm just sowing seed. So in the spirit, I'm just sowing seed. That's what we always do. We sow seed. Why? Because we know it's the root that's going to yield the fruit in your life. All right. So we sowing spirit. We are actually sowing the root in your life. It sounds weird. But you know what I'm trying to say. All right. And we trust God that He will bring up this fruit in you. Man, that you will at night wake up with godly dreams. Just a download from the heavenlies and God shows you, wow, this is what I'm going to do in the next week. This is what I'm going to do in three months' time from now. Why not? Yeah. Of course. We're supposed to dream daily about the things of God. You're supposed to daily have experiences with God. You're supposed to feast at that table constantly. But I know we are going on to perfection, but please don't be in a postponing mentality. Just say, Lord, we know we're in a process, but thank you, everything has been done. Actually already, but I want to see it now. <laughs> it's been done 2,000 cubits or years ago. <laughs> Why? So that we can step into what the eye have not yet seen. This ground you've never gone before. What the eye have not seen, what neither has it come up in the ear. That's what God has prepared for those. For those guys that truly loves Him. I believe, and this is not a wishy-washy prophecy or whatever. I know it's scriptural. I believe we are in the most exciting time in history of mankind I truly believe it I truly believe it we're in the most exciting times of the history of mankind why do I say it because in, in the book of Peter it says now and, and I'm gonna end with this in in Exodus when Moses had to make the ark with the angels which is important the angels surrounded or overshadowed the mercy seat and above the mercy seat glory appeared so over and over in the book of psalms and then in the old testament you can read this it is god who dwells between the wings of the cherubim and this is he who dwells between the wings of the cherubim and it's he that manifested glory between the wings of the cherubim all right so here is uh, the book of peter and it says this God had us in mind, and together with the book of Hebrews, and He had something better for us in mind, and the angels are looking into this, and they are desirous to see what's going to happen. On who? On the vessels of mercy. There's the mercy seat. Where does the glory appear? On the mercy who are the people that receives His mercy? The glory will appear on them. The vessels of mercy. 
think it's in Romans chapter 10 or 9 that it talks about the vessels of mercy where he will reveal his glory on the vessel. He prepared us for glory. What is glory? It's what was revealed on the mountain to John. The glorified Jesus. That's what he prepared for the vessels of mercy. He saved the best for last. So I'm expecting the best. <laughs> he saved the best wine for last. The glory of the latter will be greater than the glory of the former. It's the glory of Christ. All right. So God is always in the business of best for last. When, when Jacob had to lay his hands on the two boys of Joseph, Joseph placed the eldest so that his father would put his right hand, which was the strongest hand, the greater blessing, on the oldest son. You know that story? You know what Jacob did? He was almost blind. He did this with his hands. Joseph said, no, 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 father, wait, 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 wait. I know how this principle works. Don't, don't bless them yet. The oldest is on this side. Jacob said, I know what I'm doing. The youngest will be blessed more than the oldest. Do you get the principle? So the first son, Israel, was blessed. But the real Israel that's now circumcised in heart, you can't compare the blessing yeah. that's upon us to what was upon them. Yeah. It's much greater. Yeah. Sure. That's why Peter said, when I was on the mountain and when I saw his glory, says, I heard a voice that spoke from the excellent glory. Not just glory. The excellent glory. That's prophetic. That's prophetic. I hope, I hope you're reading between the lines what I'm trying to say. God has got something better for us. Actually, in Hebrews chapter 3 or 4, it says it as well. It says, He has got something better for us in mind. The blood of Christ cries better things than that of the blood of Abel. It cries mercy. It cries mercy. So I want to say and speak over your life this morning. I want to say, and I'm not saying this arrogantly or disrespectfully, but what Ever is going on in your life at this moment of time all right it cannot compare to the glory that's about to be revealed on you all right it says this momentarily it's for a moment these afflictions are working for you an eternal we need to get an eternal mindset because we are living on slave bestaans boerderij. Just hand to mouth. We need to get out of that mentality. Yeah. We need to think eternal mindset. Yes. Alright? So it's working for us eternal weight of glory. As long as we don't look at the things which are seen. But the things that are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporal carnal, whatever, but the things that cannot be seen is eternal. It's in the heavenlies. It's set deathless. Keep your mind set there. That's why it is so important to come to cell meetings, come to the woman meetings, come to the assembly. Why? You are washed with a heavenly mindset. Constantly. That's, that's actually all that we do. We experience, it's not all that we do, we experience the spirit that helps you to focus and set your mind. Man, the, the worship, I hope you feel it. I hope you feel it. I hope you feel and experience how open the heavenlies is. And I'm not talking about the, oh, that you would come down. I'm the, no, no, no. He's here. You can just, Experience it. Lord, I feel your presence in this place. Amen. Come on. Fall on your face before Him. Don't worry about how, what people think of you. If you lift your hands up, gooi die stoele weg voor jou, gaan le op jou gezicht. 
Go and lie in your face before Him while the worship is playing. It's, it's time for us to really, really press in. Amen. You hear what I'm trying to say? To push in because the, God has got experiences for us that's going to help us. You know what faith is? Faith means to be persuaded. To persuade and to be persuaded. Okay. I thought faith was the amount of times that I confess and try and convince myself. That's works. Can I repeat that? I thought faith was, I don't feel like this is going to work, but now I'm going to convince myself differently. <laughs> David, by his stripes you are healed, and the word of God says this, and, da, 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 and after that nothing happens. I get disappointed. I'm bitter towards God. I feel inferior because this, that book doesn't work. But the moment when God came and He persuaded me, I had the faith of Him. The persuasion that came from him. Then I didn't have to work up anything. I was already convinced. Yeah. And if anything around me seems to be different to that, I could refer to what I experienced in my upper room, in my closet. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? He persuaded me. My situation did not persuade me. If your situation persuaded you, you better get a new persuasion. You need Him to persuade you. I use physical things to help me. I love fishing. So I would go to where there's water. It makes me calm. It helps my mind to just be at peace. I sit next to the water, go to my nothing box, <laughs> go fishing, and He speaks to me. Some people, they just go and stand in the shower. It's funny how it always is connected to water. Interesting. They go and stand in the shower instantly. I, I've gotten, uh, did I say right? I got so many sermons in 30 seconds in a shower. I would scream, Nicolene, grab a pen and paper. Huh? Huh? Write down. That scripture, that scripture, that scripture, that scripture, thank you. <laughs> Leave it right there, stand up, preach for two hours on a sermon that I got downloaded in 10 seconds. Why? Just connected for a few seconds. What if we can stay there? It says, I will give you access to walk amongst these that stand by. <laughs> book of Zechariah says, take away the filthy garments let's get rid of all the sin issues put the kingly mentality on him put a robe on him clothe him with Christ and then I will give him access to dwell in this courts in the heavenlies I will give you access in a different realm of authority a different seat from where if you speak from that place things happen come on that's why you were born not just to get a ticket to get to heaven that might be part of it is part of the deal but that's not the whole deal you were born again so that God can reveal Christ in you the hope of glory it's time that we get glory eyes. Because if the eyes is dark, if you just see darkness around you, the whole body will be dark. But if the eyes is light, if you expect goodness, if you expect the Lord in everything that you see and do, your whole body will be flooded with light. Hallelujah. Is there anything else? There's lots more, <laughs> but we're not going to go into it now. So come on. I hope you hear the call of the Spirit. Yeah. It is the same call where God called John. And He said this, John, come higher. Yes. Come higher. 
I want to show you something else. I want to show you the door is open and I want to show you the throne. Authority, where you are seated, what belongs to you, who's your brother and who's your daddy. Let me show you. Yes, but I struggled with drugs. I'm even struggling right now. God says, tell my son, let my son go. The truth is, you are one of God's sons that's just struggling with your identity. Yes, but that's who I really am. I'm a drug. You're not a druggie. You're a son that's struggling with your identity. I gave you a huge key right now. You see, we clothe ourselves with things that we do and we take it as our identity. I will always be a guy that struggles with this because I'm only human. No, 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 no. You're of a different seed. You're of the God kind. You were born in Adam. You were born in sin. But you are born again into Christ are you born again were you born again then you're a different kind I expect different things I expect different dreams if I dream dreams of the old man I remind myself that's not who I am I'm not that guy I'm a new man I'm a new creation the old have passed away all things are new Yes, but you just dreamed about all your sin that you did. That was the old man. He died. He was crucified with Christ. He was baptized into his death. The new man is here. And if my mind is still unrenewed and I struggle with old things and mindsets, I tell my mind, you are new. Lord, I thank you that you just revealed to me how much I just need you more and more. You turn to Him, your source of life. Yeah. That's when the fruit does not come from the knowledge of your good and your evil. It comes from the knowledge of Him. Let me end with this. Joseph Prince said this. And it would actually have been awesome if we could partake of the communion now. But we did it. Listen to this. Adam and Eve partook of the wrong tree. And it says this, And both of them, their eyes were opened, and they knew and saw that they were naked. Just remember those words, exactly in that order. Alright? They partook of the wrong tree, the fruit, they ate it, their eyes were opened, and they knew that they were naked. Self-aware. Here's the two guys that walks to Emmaus. And Jesus joins himself to their conversation. And they invite him, and, but he hides himself from them. He does not reveal that he's Jesus. Only he could do it. So he walks with them and he asks them, Guys, why are you so sad? Have you not been in Jerusalem that we thought that Jesus would, is the Messiah and everything? And the Bible says this, And Jesus explained through all the scriptures concerning himself yeah. from Genesis can I say to the revelation I was not done all right from from Genesis through all the scriptures of those days he explained he showed Christ through the whole word this the voice that's actually me let me just reveal myself through my word to you your guys it says and when he took the bread which is the same as the word fruit, when he took the bread, it says, and both of them, their eyes were opened, and they knew him. You missed it. <laughs> All right. Adam and Eve, their eyes were opened, and they were aware of their mistakes. Nakedness. Jesus, when they partook of the right tree, their eyes were opened, and they saw Jesus. It's not about me, it's about Him. That's awesome. That's awesome. So when I read the Word, I see Him, I don't see my fallen self. I don't see my sins, I see Him. The Scripture points to Him. 
And in looking to Him, it changes me into that likeness. So I'm not trying to look like the Word. I look at Him and that makes me walk in that image and likeness. That is the word grace. Grace is a divine influence, the influence from God's side in your heart and it reflects in your life. That's grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Father, I thank you Holy Spirit that you are right here and that you are setting people free from self today. Lord, set, setting us free from our efforts, from working in thorns, from sweat of our brows, from working in the curse, and you are showing us that you took it upon yourself. You sweated. You took the, the thorns on your head so that we can only believe. And Lord, I pray that you will take all theology, all reasoning, all these vain uh, imaginations and nonsense that we have in our minds, that you will just still it. And that we will just see you. That we will just look to you. Experience you. Experience your life. Lord, that you love us that you chose us, you set us apart for good works. Lord, the thoughts that you have towards us is to prosper us, to give us an expected end, which is glory, not destruction. Lord, raise our expectation. Lord, where there was, and I, I feel it, where there was hopelessness, you revive hope again in us. Lord, in the midst of killing, stealing, and destruction, we believe in a God of life. In the midst of where things are taken away from us and things that tries to distract us and, and uh, horrible things that goes on around us, Lord, I thank you that you say we, when we, what is trier, when we uh, mourn, we are not like those that have no hope. When we mourn, we have a living hope. They're alive. I thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are the healer, that you are the comforter, like only you can do. You are the giver of peace, not like our circumstances gives us. Not like our money can give us. You give us a different peace. It's everlasting peace. You give us a joy that comes from a different source of this worldly system. It comes from heaven. Lord, we long and we ask for that joy and that peace that comes from you. And Lord, I pray that your people will be rooted in a relationship with their true Father, where they can genuine cry out with the help of the Holy Spirit, Abba, genuine, legitimate Father. I thank you, Father, that we can approach your throne with boldness and we can ask whatever we need and we know that you hear us and we know that you want to give it to us and you give it to us. And Lord, we don't ask fleshly, carnal, nonsense things that doesn't matter. You know what we need. But Lord, we ask, reveal yourself afresh to us. Reveal your heart. Reveal your plans. Reveal your purpose for us. Let us not be just aimless people that box in the air on this earth in our walk. But let us aim and fire and hit the mark let us be effective in the kingdom I thank you Jesus 
I strongly believe that this year is the year of the revealing of the closet. If you know what I mean. God says, whatever happens in the closet, positively, it means those that goes to the inner room where it's just you and Him, and you don't blab out, wow, today I spent two hours in the presence of God. I'm not talking about that. It's without people knowing, without people hearing about it. God's about to reveal those jewels in the open. Your prayers at night, your tears at night, God's about to reveal those things in a good sense. Your intercession for other people, the fruit's about to be revealed. Hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Your praying, your good burdening for others <laughs> is about to be revealed. It's about to be answered speedily like this, effortlessly. It's time. It's time for that. It's time. The season is you're going to go places that you've never been before. And tomorrow, which is now, I'm going to do wonders amongst you. It's going to be so great. It's, you can't compare it to the wonders in Egypt. You can't compare it to the wonders in the wilderness. It's greater works. It's greater works. Oh, glory, Lord. Glory, Father. Father, I thank you. And as I'm standing in this house, I thank you. It inspires me so much to see a, a true son and true sons and daughters in this house. And Lord, I thank you that you've got them for Bruce and Anya. You've got them in your hand. They are the apple of your eye. And Lord, what you promised you will do it you will perf you will perform it shall i bring to the place of birth and not cause to bring forth for i surely have said i will do it don't ask how and when and why because I have said it and I will do it but you just surrender to me enjoy my presence and be steadfast on the rock and I will perform these miracles and these wonders and people will come to the place of the diamond to come and look at my jewels and they will come and to look at the manifestation of all my wonders and my signs that I will perform. They will fly in from all over the world to come and see what I do. But you, just stay at my feet. Don't ask questions. Only believe. For I will open rivers in the wilderness i will spring forth the palm tree the righteous the uprightness in the middle of the desert i will open the fountains the oasis of the deep the mysteries of the deep and hidden things of my treasury I will open it it will be so much more and deeper than what you've ever experienced but just come to me and yes there's a picture in your head of the outpour of the Spirit that you ask me for I will do that but I'm gonna surprise you <laughs> I'm gonna surprise you it's gonna be much wilder than what you think
It's going to be much wilder than what you think. It's going to be much wilder than what you think. Everything will come at the right time. You, you will not even have to plan and, and worry about those things. I, I'm going to do it. Other guys had to plan it ahead of time. You're going to be in the holy chaos and then I will do it. Then. I know what I'm talking about. So I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. So don't worry about the things now. I'm, I'm going to do it then. But, but the then is not then. It's the then is here. <laughs> that, that's, that's why I'm here. The then is here. The then is here. It's here. The manna has ceased. The manna has ceased. It's time for the old corn. Why? The eternal food. The ones that comes from a different country. A different realm. That food. That food. That's what I'm giving you. That's what I'm giving you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, I thank you that if there's sickness and disease that it has already bowed, it has already bowed before the feet of Christ. All sickness and disease, gone in Jesus' mighty name. In this house, the Holy Spirit rules, the life of God rules, the blood of the Lamb rules, and we say, yes, God can. And He is busy doing it. He is. So He is healing right now. He is restoring right now. Come on, there's people in business that has been done in by other people and God's saying, it stops right now. I'm putting a hedge around you. I'm putting a hedge around you. And God sê, ek gaan vir jou herstel dit wat gesteel is en dit wat opgeëet is rondom jou. Ek gaan het vir jou bewys oor dat ek lief is vir jou. Jy gaan het sien. Jy gaan het sien. It's time to taste and see that God is good. It's time to experience the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. It's time to eat from that table that is set before us. It's time to feast church it's time to feast it's feasting time it's a good time it's an awesome time it's a massive exciting time it's a glorious time you're gonna spin around and you're gonna feel and scream like you are dreaming it's here it's here the times of labor is over. The birth is here. The joy is here. Hallelujah. I hope you hear what the Spirit has said. I take it as well. Um, I'm encouraged. I'm motivated. I'm pumped with the Spirit. <laughs> Just like you are. Um, we are just vessels of our Father. Um, please let nobody ever be there yeah. and you are here. I know it's not happening in this house because you will always feel inferior. Yeah. I'm just like you. I watch cricket. I go fishing. My wife loves shopping. Hallelujah. But we are human beings. We are brothers and sisters. I minister non-stop amongst the black community there by us and that is all that I constantly teach them. Brother, how are you? My sister, how are you? Why? I've got the principle of same father, same seed, same brothers and sisters. If we can have that, 
healing instantly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lift your arms.